it, it, sorry, it seems to me that if I was to, and again, I'd need to look into it a lot more, but just kind of on the surface of things, it looks like likes of Sunak and World Economic Forum are hoping to just throw enough stuff at this to kind of cloud it in a way. It's just yeah. like people are just kind of going to be lost with it and um, in a strange way to, to to drown out the old cryptocurrencies. Does that make sense? Do, it does make that's... sense. I, I think that's, that's, a, that's a strategy of desperation when you realise you can't stop it. Um, so I take solace in the fact that they're throwing these uh, intri like um, terrible ideas because to me it, it says they re they someone realizes that they can't stop this. Um, but Evelyn, to your point, I think which is really interesting is how would you subvert this? So and this all goes back down to the consensus mechanism and decentralization because That's predicated on the fact that these things weren't conjured up themselves for nefarious means. I mean, <clears throat> no one has any idea who this Satoshi Nakamoto guy actually is. Half the internet believes he's dead, the other half believes he never existed, and then another half on top of that believes he's six people. So we don't actually know who built all this stuff or what their real purpose, what for it was i mean you're, we think you're about, saying there's a bitcoin palpatine evelyn i i mean it's not <laughs> what, what where did the internet come from where did the uh, the dark web come from it was all a process it was all a sort of development of the u.s navy i mean yeah um but it does have good uses right and like to, to your point i would say it the whole point of bitcoin is it doesn't matter uh who satoshi was or if he's 10 people or if he's still alive or, or, or dead the code is open source i can read the code there are other people that can read the code and we can see exactly what it's doing and how it works broadly like a handful of people know it really inside out very well but if you wanted to dedicate 18 months of your life learning bitcoin you could probably do it like from a, you're an engineer and there are plenty of people that are like the whole point of open source is that more eyes you have on the code um we can make sure there's nothing nefarious happening in its operations um i, I think the attack vectors come from things like when you understand the consensus mechanism and mining pools for example it's like how much how much uh, proof of work is being carried out by a single entity for example and then the, the rebuttal to something like that is that the amount of energy that you would need now the network is so big in the early days of bitcoin for sure you could have subverted the network uh, and it wouldn't have taken much but the one of the kind of intriguing things about bitcoin's creation is that it happened so quietly under the covers that that attack vector never took place and now it's too big to attack it really is uh the if it was to shrink, if the network was to shrink in size, it could become vulnerable again. But it's almost impossible to attack Bitcoin now. And even if you manage to get away with it, you didn't. You won't be able to achieve much because uh, the, the community can vote to create another hard fork and move the ledger and do something else. So, for example, the quantum, the quantum uh, attack, which is one that people keep leveling towards crypto, like quantum computing, will. It, it, it can, if the quantum computer was created that was powerful enough, you could uh, attack the consensus mechanism and generate its own blocks and rewrite the ledger. That That's possible, but the cost of doing that is ridiculous, and the network would go down for a while, and then we would create a quantum-proof uh, consensus mechanism. They exist today, and then the network, which is the participants of this payments infrastructure, would move on to the new Bitcoin, the quantum proof Bitcoin. So it's really difficult to subvert at this stage, but who knows, um, maybe someone can find out a way of doing it. Evelyn, you have some articles I can see linked from the likes of the Dark Lord and others. What, mm. what are they up to? And uh, well, I mean, I, presumably they're trying to subvert it in some way. So what, what, are, they, what are they doing? Well, that's the thing. I, I, Either they are trying to subvert it actively or there is no need to subvert it because for one reason or another, they may have some kind of backdoor. <clears throat> but the thing that really tugged me onto it was that when you start looking at World Economic Forum, uh, the Blair Institute, any of these big 
institutions that we know are globalist, we know they are progressive, we know they are behind the likes of lockdown and you know the nonsense about Ukraine and all these people seem to be involved in this kind of stuff. And then they also all seem to talk about how they need to be involved in crypto. They're going to use blockchain to get their currencies to work. They're going to base their digital ID systems on blockchain. You're going to have a digital ID that is minted as some kind of NFT. And that's going to be how you access essentially the social credit score. I mean, uh, see I, things I, from like the, I'll the just share government. what you what you gave me, uh, Evelyn, from, from, uh, from Dark Lord. Since the emergence of enterprise blockchain in 2017, governments and NGOs across dozens of countries, including all members of the G20, have undertaken blockchain pilots. The wide-ranging use cases include payments, security tokens, identity management, supply chain traceability, land registration, corporate registration, healthcare, and taxation. The role of digital identity in supporting human agency now, now, who's with, with, with respect? This sounds quite a lot like some of these other articles that you sent me. One of your, one of the articles you sent me is all about how blockchain could solve the problem of digital identity. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I would say this is technology, and how you choose to use it is essentially up to you. So, um, again, it's o o open source code can be used by anyone by its nature. That's the whole point of it: is, is that it's open. And yeah, if someone wants to use it for nefarious means, they absolutely can. There is a horrific dystopian view of all of these technologies being used to literally enslave humanity. I, I, it is possible, 100%. But I would say that the, the point of understanding how these technologies work is to give you an opportunity to decide in which direction the decentralization will uh, go and how the future will end up being uh, created essentially so yeah I, I fully admit that these technology they're out there now anyone can use them and uh, it's why it's important I think that your audience engages with this technology rather than just thinks that it's a scam or it's uh, I mean how uses. let's just pretend that we're all in an arms race with the likes of uh, Blair and his uh, minions and WEF and all of those guys who are clearly onto this, right? They're clearly, they've clearly looked at this and they've said, we need to be in early on this as well so that, you know, we don't lose our grip on power. They're always looking at that. We, we know how they play. What is the practical advice to people who want to ensure that they're not like, you know, what can they practically do when it comes to crypto to, to not end up enslaved by a, uh, Close to our friends. Sure. So not financial advice, as we always say in the crypto yeah. sector. But the first thing that you should do uh, is self-custody some of the assets that you, you, you... I would look, ultimately, I think you've got to be aware that all the assets that you hold, that, that you own, are maintained on trusted systems, and you could be disenfranchised from that system. In fact, again, a lot of people that I met in Burma were disenfranchised, either through their own criminal activity, so it's their own downfall. But a lot of them would also say that they got into some trouble that they wasn't their fault and they were disenfranchised. So just be aware, number one, all the assets that you own, your entire wealth just about, if it's not cash under the bed, it's on a registry and it's a trusted system. So the first thing that I started doing is taking assets into self-custody and cold storage. Um, which comes at a, a price so you need to understand how these things work you know I, i'd throw it out there one of the most the three million bitcoin hasn't moved on the blockchain since its creation and the the I, out of that three million is basically estimated that it's either lost or never going to be moved ever again so you know so and that's because it's it was self-custodial people took that crypto uh, that crypto put it in a wallet somewhere either on their laptop or uh, mm -hmm. on a usb stick and lost it um <laughs> so like literally can you imagine uh, being an original bitcoin owner and you've lost it on a usb stick Bloody Dude, 
I, I've lost more Bitcoin than I care to say, but that's because at the time it was worth nothing and I didn't care about it, right? It was like worth a couple of pennies. Um, and we had lots of it. Um, but yeah, so you got you begin by understanding that you the value that you store is in the hands of other people, it's, it's trusted. And if you if you believe that it's worthwhile to have an insurance policy and you trust yourself, then take then cryptocurrency gives you the ability to take assets into self custody and make makes them far more difficult to seize, and that makes you more less difficult to control and gives you an insurance policy. I mean, what what are some trusted ones, and what are some ones that are dodgy and should be avoided? Oh, oh look, there are, there are over twenty two thousand cryptocurrencies listed <laughs> right, okay. on on Coin Market Cap. Um, I guarantee you, ninety nine point nine nine percent of them are going to be complete disasters. I, I, most of them are defunct now, anyway, and like mm -hmm. aren't the projects that I could literally we could set up a, an AA coin in five minutes. And you you right. tell me the parameters that you want, how many coins do you want issued in circulation, and we can set that up. It's um, all right. Don't worry about that. <laughs> let's not do that. That that's <laughs> shit coinery. Let's avoid it. Um, why would yeah out do your own research is another mantra right but look there, there are the obvious one that i would not hesitate to tell people to consider is bitcoin um the privacy coins that your community mentioned i think are very worthy as well for the reason that they are extremely private and when we go back to trusting yourself to self-custody and keep keeping your privacy intact and your autonomy intact then Clearly, those coins play a role there. Um, I don't want to mention too many others because I'll just get accused of shilling. Um, I, I, I was going to say, surely for the uh, sake of transparency, you must also now disclose how much Bitcoin you yourself own? <laughs> I don't know is the honest answer to that because it's a lot of it is on old laptops and wallets that I no longer have access to. But technically, I've got the key somewhere. Um, I can't disclose how many assets that I have. Uh, is the bottom line. 